Hi guys, so today I'm going to start a mini album. I haven't done one in a while, I think since maybe last Christmas. Not this one, but the, I don't know, it's been a while. So, um, I want to do one kind of spring inspired and maybe it'll be a gift for my mom. So, um, I'm going to show you real quick what I'll be using. Uh, the celebrated bags that you can find at Michael's. I did look at Joann's to see if they had little paper bags like this, like with the different colors, and they did not. So I don't know if I just wasn't looking in the right spot or they just don't carry them. But they're paper socks. These are the small ones, okay, guys? These are the ones that are supposedly three and a half um, by two by six and three quarter inches, okay? So these are the smaller ones. They have the larger ones. If you do the larger ones, you need larger um, dimensions, right? Or measurements on your papers. Um, and I, when I picked this up, I knew I wanted to do something with this. So I'm going to be using. Um, the Butterfly Garden Stack by Die Cuts with a View. I think it's so pretty. Um, very similar like the Tim Mariposa stack, but not as ornate. I don't think it's a little more simple, okay? So I'll be picking out pages from this and cutting them down, and I probably won't show you actually cutting them down because I have a very small workspace here at my mom's house, but um, I'll, you know, let you know the measurements when obviously I do cut them. So just a very pretty stack. Um, I am using black uh, paper bags, so I thought they would look really pretty. Uh, as a background because it does have some black tones in the uh, paper pack. And then to coordinate with that, I have the, <clears throat> excuse me, Recollections um, Preppy Beach cardstock pack. And I think a lot of the, like this beautiful coral color on the front, maybe that pink will go, and even the lighter kind of uh, slate color would be, match really well with the papers. So that's just, you know, if I need cardstock in there. Um, I also have this color book um, pack from Walmart. It's just their neutral pack because I might need some of these neutral colors or like the black cardstock that's in here and things. And I also picked this up at Walmart, the color book um, like glitter paper. And I think they're a dollar. There's two sheets in here. And I just think this pink is so pretty. So I, I want to try to incorporate it somehow. So I have that. And so I'm just showing you some of the basic things. And then you're going to need um, for the binder for the outside of the uh, um, mini album some chipboard and this is nice and thick I don't know the size of this chipboard like medium density I'm not sure um, it looks like it's almost an eighth inch of, an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch thick so um, this is an eight and a half by eleven sheet but we are going to cut it down so it doesn't matter if you have a twelve by twelve or whatever you want to use but that's what I'm using for the binder itself um, and then of course you're going to need different things like adhesives, wet and dry um, rulers um, just to help out a little bit with your measurements, um, scissors, um, an X-Acto knife. Uh, I use an X-Acto knife to cut my um, uh, chipboard. And of course all the little doodads that you want to add later, okay, so embellishments, things like that. Right now I'm just going to make the basic book and then I'm going to add the embellishments as I go along. You guys know I kind of, sometimes I'll make a bunch of embellishments and then I'll use them or I don't use them and sometimes I like to just make them afterwards. So I'm going to start with the book construction and then we'll go into um, using the embellishments. I do have a new way of binding. Um, it's kind of funny because I was thinking about this months ago that I wanted to make this binding and I just, you know, wrote it down and I thought it's really confusing to make on a video. It just seemed too confusing to me. It's like a bunch of up and downs, up and downs to make these little strip things. So uh, today I'm only going to do probably three pages, three paper bags, but it's going to have obviously all kinds of flaps and things. And then the binding will be very simple because it is that idea, but it's only going to have three um, peaks, if that's what you want to call them. So, uh, hopefully you can kind of follow along and it won't be too problematic. If not, just do the, do the binding that you know how to do, okay? Um, there's always old faithful standbys we've always used in other books. So, uh, let me get some of this stuff cleared away and let's get okay, started. I think I'm going to start with the actual paper bag itself. I want to talk to you guys a little about uh, uh, the dimensions. Okay, it's going to end up looking something like this, okay? But the paper bag first looks like this, of course. Just natural, you know, normal little paper bag you just take out of the package. And I'm going to use three of them only because I haven't done one this way, so I want to kind of see what it looks like and then if I like it, maybe in the future I'll do um, larger books, you know, with more uh, pages. But basically what we're going to do, it's a little bit different, and you guys all know um, Kathy Gord, I think, I would say originated this style of paper bag album, but maybe she, I, I'm not sure, maybe she did, maybe she didn't, but I've seen it from her. Um, she does a different thing where she releases the gussets, and then I've done a... Um, uh, something a little bit different than that in the past and I've showed you guys to cut the gusset in here uh, and not all the way through the bag down into here and it just makes a nicer cleaner bag so this time it's gonna be a little bit even more different what I want you to do is um, before you cut the end of the bag or anything um, the the final measurement of the bag is going to include what I show you how to do next okay so um, if you can see it's kind of open there but um, that's part of the binding okay so what I would do is take either your scissors or um, a craft knife, but you want to be very careful. 
you're not opening the bag or anything like that. For right now, you're gonna just kind of put this flap up so that you can get this loose here. I hope you can see that because I know it's a black bag. It's kind of hard to see. I can see that it's difficult. But you know, when you're opening the bag up, this little area, this flat part here, okay? The bag is not open, but you know this is the part that opens up. It has all its little folds here. This, the bottom basically of the bag, is what we're gonna be working with. And all I'm gonna do is put my finger here. I'm only using that very bottom flap, okay? I'm not using the sides. Right now I'm keeping those kind to the side. If you have a craft knife and you're very good, you're gonna slit that, but I'm gonna use my scissors and I'm gonna go on the very, very edge. I mean, you're cutting basically nothing off. What you're gonna do is open the bag there. So I'm just cutting the very edge of that. And if you can see, it's hardly anything coming off. I'm just kind of shaving it so that the bag will now have a hole there. So if I pull this apart, this is the very bottom of the bag. If I pull it apart, um, it's open. I can stick my finger in there all the way to the other side of the bag, okay? So that's what we're going to be using, okay, uh, as far as our binding. So on the other side, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Again, just working with that very bottom flap, just that piece. I'm going to cut the very edge off again, and again, very carefully and minimally. Um, you don't want to cut too much off. Basically, you just want to cut off enough to open it up, okay? Um, it's not going to make a difference, so we're going to cover it anyway, so even if you go a little bit further down, it's not going to be very noticeable. So there you go. And like on this one, I didn't quite get all the way through, so I'm just going to stick the scissor in there and open it. Okay, so now I can stick my finger the whole length of the bag if I wanted to. Okay, you see that? Still haven't done anything to the rest of the bag. Okay, the bag is intact, looks just exactly the same. So what I want you to do now is go ahead and open the bag up. Like if you were gonna put something in it. We're gonna open up the bag and the whole gusset is released at that point, okay? And this one I didn't quite get through, hold on. Okay, all right, so now this whole piece is completely away from the bag, basically. What you're gonna do is push the gussets out, the sides of the bag out, and flatten them down, okay? So now your bag is gonna be like this huge piece like this, and this guy's still kind of sticking out. What we're gonna do with that little piece is just push it back in on itself, okay? Push it in and fold it over. And that is going to become part of your binding, okay? And now, so the, for the book, the reason I'm doing it this way is because it's gonna be a small book anyway. I didn't want to have this as part of the binding facing in the way she usually does, and then it's gonna be really short or longer. I mean, I guess you can trim it down. I just wanted to do a different type of binding and I do a different thing, so that's it. And then you're gonna decide again how you want your flaps. Do you want them to go down, both of them in, have a flap here, a flap here, one down here, one in the back, make it a pocket. Whatever you wanna do, you can still do the same things. We're just gonna decide that as we go along, okay? So I'm gonna do three bags exactly like this, okay? I'm gonna cut them open and all that good stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna keep these to the side. So again, for my book, I'm making three. The next thing we need to talk about is the actual binding. This is a little bit different system, it's, I'm telling you, it's kind of funny, I've been thinking about this, and I saw some other woman recently had done something similar, and I thought, that's exactly what I was trying to come up with, but um, I'm incorporating it a little bit differently. Um, and then her book is totally different in sizes and all that, so it's kind of hard to um, to relate the two. You still have to pretty much start from scratch with my new dimensions. So, I wrote it down, I have all my little notes here about how big I want the bag, the envelopes, the flap pages, and then also how I was going to do the binding, okay? So it's little scrappy notes, <laughs> but basically, um, the bags are about three and three eighth inches wide and five inches long. When I cut it, it's gonna be five inches long, okay? Um, and I probably should have talked about it, but I'll talk about that in a minute because we do need to cut part of this bag off. If you wanted to keep the bag the same length, you don't have to cut anything off. Just make sure your paper measures from one side to the other when you make your flaps, okay? But I am gonna cut this down. Um, so let me put that to the side. But for right now, I want to talk about the binding because we're gonna need to have that ready as we make our pages. So for my binding, um, I want it to tuck kind of inside. Basically, we're gonna make hills and valleys. And then these guys are gonna be tucked in there. So I wanted the binding to be a little bit smaller than the width of the bag. So I'm cutting my binding. This is gonna be for the just just the binding part. Nothing that has to do with the binder or anything like that, but it is going to be what goes inside of the binder, obviously, to keep it together and the pages together. It's gonna to be three and three eighth inches wide by eight inches long, okay? So three and three eighth inches wide, three and three eighth, and eight inches long. 
Now, I do not have my Martha Stewart scoring board here because it's really big and I didn't want to have to bring it. So the only one I brought with me was my score buddy. So I only have very minimal um, uh, scoring ability. I mean, I can move things around and try to manipulate it so I can get in here. But I'm going to try and show you guys what I need you to do. So I'm going to place this on here. And we're first going to be scoring at two inches. So two inches in, I'm going to make a score line. Two inches, okay? And then a quarter inch from there, so at two and a quarter, I'm going to make another score line. So now I have these two score lines that are a quarter inch apart. Two inches from the edge, and then two and a quarter, okay? And then from there, we're going to do one at two and three quarters, because now I'm going to have a half inch in between this quarter inch mark and then here. So two inches in, a quarter inch, which is two and a quarter, then two and three quarters. The next one is going to be at... Um, three and a quarter. It's going to be a half inch from there. And then the next one's going to be a quarter inch over from that one. So it's going to be at three and a half. So um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be making a pattern that you guys can um, purchase. Uh, if you if I do that, of course, I will let you know. But for right now, I want you guys to really pay attention because it's not, it's not anything that's going to be written. I might be able to write it in the description box also, okay? So basically, you're going to do two from two inches and you're going to do a quarter. And then a half inch, a half inch, a quarter inch, and then again a half inch, one half inch, a quarter inch. Okay, you're gonna do that three times. So it's just the pattern of quarter, half, half, quarter, and then the half is gonna be at four, and then four and a half, and then a quarter from there, four and three quarters, and then we're gonna go to five and a quarter to make the next half, and then half again, uh, which is gonna be five and three quarters, and then one quarter from there, it's gonna be at six. Okay, so I can name those off for you guys, but basically you're going to be at two, two, two and a quarter, two and uh, three quarters, three and a quarter, three and a half, four, four and a half, four and a quarter, five and a quarter, I'm sorry, I said four and a half, four and three quarters, five and a quarter, uh, five and three quarters, and then at six. And that's it. I know it's kind of confusing. Um, and what we're going to do is, on the half inch marks, where it's the first half inch line here is going to be folded up. Okay, and so the one that goes to the left of that is going to be folded down. And basically I'm just going to mark those for right now because that's how we're going to make the binding that kind of comes up and our envelope is going to stick in there. Okay, the little quarter inch marks are going to be the um, amount of space you're going to have in between the pages. So we're going to leave the quarter inch one alone. Really you're going to fold it too, but for right now we're just going to leave it alone. And I'm kind of pushing on that and folding this at the same time. So now I have another little piece of binding that's going to be sticking up. These are going to be glued together or taped together. And then the next one, at the next half inch pair, I'm going to fold these. So I hope I don't, you know, yeah, I don't get you guys lost here, but it's pretty simple once you're, you kind of understand what I'm trying to do. Basically you're making half inch um, binding. I messed that one up. Okay. So we're going to have these guys. And the quarter inch ones are just spaces. They're just going to give you space. So back here, I, I went ahead and folded them just so you can kind of have an idea. I'm going to put um, double-sided tape all along in there. And that's going to help these stick together. If you don't want to use double-sided tape, you can use wet glue. It doesn't matter. It's just double-sided tape. It's easier to kind of lay down. I'm going to be using this Be Creative tape. Um, it's basically... Oh, I forgot what they call this tape. It's basically double-sided tape. It's all messed up down here. But it's that Suk Wang. It says every company that sells this stuff, that little tearing tape, it says the same thing. It's from China, I'm pretty sure. So I'm just going to start it. And I'm going to apply some where we're going to put those junctions together, okay? I know this sounds confusing, but where those are going to tape together, that's where I'm going to be putting some tape. I'm going to put the very... This is on the back side, okay? What you would consider the back side. I'm going to put a piece of tape here and a piece of tape on this back piece. And I'm just going to go down and then I'll come back when I have the tape all the inch, um, What they call score tape, but it's from Be Creative, so they don't call it score tape. But um, all I did was on every other half inch little slot that's half inch wide, I put two pieces of um, the score tape. You can put it on either side. You can put it however you want, okay? You can even put all across if you want it to be even stickier. But what we're going to do, um, and I did not make sure these are stuck down real well, is just pick that off, the backing, and reveal the other side of the double-sided tape. And uh, that's kind of why I pre-folded it. I'm going to put those two together. And to make sure they're nice and um, that they adhere real well, I'm going to 
use my bone folder and that'll also help it flatten out a little bit there and push that in, okay? So now that is the first part of my binding, okay? And then my little envelope when we're ready and it's all decorated is gonna go right in there. That piece is gonna go in there and it's gonna glue together or you can glue it or you can put it together however you like, but that's where it's gonna glue and then we have the flaps. Okay, so I hope that kind of makes sense. I'm kind of showing you a little um, ahead of time so you kind of have an idea of what I'm trying to do here. Okay, so I'm gonna pick these off and then stick them together. This pair of two, uh, the half inch marks, and then this pair of half inch marks. And then we're gonna have three um, hills, okay, that we're gonna, or mountains, however you wanna call them, that we will be um, placing our paper bags on. Go. I'm gonna put this to the side just for a minute. We're not gonna lose this. This two inches, this extra, is gonna go into the binder of the book, the front and back pages. So this will be the front here and the back. And I made them two inches long so that it goes in there and it won't pull out real easily. Um, the other thing you can do is make them a little bit shorter and you can wrap them behind each other. I think Kathy Gordon has something similar to that. And you would glue it and then you kind of glue it into your book that way. Uh, I kind of rather keep it this way where it kind of goes into the binding. So that's up to you. I mean, there's lots of different ways to bind things and whatever's easiest for you, I would say go for that, okay? All right, so as far as um, the bags, like I said, I am going to cut it down, so I'll show you that right now. I probably should have done that all at one step, but um, I was just showing you, if you want to keep this bag this length, then you would cut your flaps to be uh, three, six, and looks like three quarter maybe, six and seven eighths, no, seven eighths, um, yeah, about six and three quarter inches, and you'd have your really long and skinny book, which I wasn't going for. I wanted it to be a little bit more... Um, a little bit smaller just so it looks nicer. So my envelopes, I'm going to cut them at five inches. Five inches from this end, okay? This is the open end. This is where we made our creative little um, binding. So what we're going to do is bring out... And this one thing, I need new um, blades. It's cutting my paper really ugly and I have them. I just can't find them. I need to look for that. But uh, we're going to cut it five inches. So put the back side of the bag up to the five inch mark on your cutter. Um, and try to be kind of accurate about it because you're going to be able to tell later on if it's not quite right. But So at five inches and I'm just going to cut that off. Okay, so this you can use it for something else if you want. I don't know what, maybe make some flowers out of it, but right now I'm going to toss it. So our book is basically going to be about this size and it's going to be a little bit larger on the outside. So it's kind of cute, nice chubby little book. I think that would be cute. 